Dear students, under the topic center of mass, in our previous video, we found the center of mass of a thin wire in the form of a circular arc. Now, in this video, we are going to learn about the center of mass of a solid hemisphere of radius A. Now, if you see, we have a hemisphere here. You can imagine a spherical shape which is cut into exactly half. That is, for example, you can imagine an orange which when cut from the center longitudinally, we get a hemisphere. Now, this is a hemisphere where the center is taken as the point O. And the, we have drawn the diagram in such a manner that it is symmetrical about the x-axis. And the x-axis is taken as OA. And we have a... Uh, a few assumptions for this solid hemisphere. So, it is called a solid hemisphere because it has volume inside also. If there is no volume within the sphere, I mean within the hemisphere, then it is said to be a hollow hemisphere which will be a shell. So, here a hemispherical shell. But here we have volume inside the hemisphere and so it is called as solid hemisphere. Now we will see the assumptions of this solid hemisphere one by one. The first one is we take the point O as the center of the sphere and therefore it is also the center of the hemisphere. The line OA is the middle ra radius which is along which is taken as the x axis. And then we have A which is the radius of the solid hemisphere. And then we have rho which is the mass per unit volume. That is for one, one unit of volume the mass is taken as rho. First we shall write the volume of the solid hemisphere. By the formula we know that the volume of the solid hemisphere is given by 2 by 3 pi a cube where a is the radius of the hemisphere. So the formula for the volume of a solid hemisphere is 2 by 3 pi a cube. We require this in order to find the total mass capital M of the solid hemisphere. So by the formula mass of the solid hemisphere will be we have to multiply the volume of the solid hemisphere with mass per unit volume. Now what is the volume of the solid hemisphere? For that reason we have only we have found this that is we have written this. So, this is equal to 2 by 3 pi a cube. This has to be multiplied with mass per unit volume. What is the mass per unit volume that we have taken? We have taken it as rho. So, 2 by 3 pi a cube rho gives us the capital M value which is the mass of the solid hemisphere which we will be using in the formula to find the center of mass. So, we have found capital M. The next step is we have to divide this solid hemisphere into circular laminae perpendicular to the middle radius OA. So, perpendicular to the middle radius OA, we have to divide this uh, uh, hemisphere into thin circular laminae. So, I have shown only one laminae over here. In a similar manner, there will be various laminates. Uh, this hemisphere will be divided into various laminae. Now, the idea of the problem is we have to find the center of mass for this one particular laminate. Uh, I mean, uh, we have to evaluate the mass of, the, of this laminate and we have to integrate it in order to find the center of mass for this hemisphere. So, for that, divide the hemisphere into thin circular laminae perpendicular to the middle radius OA. So, after this, we will consider this one particular lamina out of all the divided laminae. So, one lamina I am considering. And how I am taking it? I am taking it in such a manner that the distance of this lamina is x from the center O. So, if you see, here is the center of this laminae. So, this distance is taken as x and we already know that the radius of the hemisphere is a and this is the radius of the hemisphere because it is from the center to the outer surface of the 
hemisphere the line reaches therefore it becomes the radius of the hemisphere which is a then what will be the radius of this circular lamina the shape of this circular lamina will be cylindrical in shape so if you imagine it will be cylindrical in shape for example the lamina it's a very thin lamina so i have drawn it like this and i have shown you so it is in the shape of a cylinder so this lamina i have draw, drawn it by changing its shape so it is in the shape of a cylinder so what will be the radius this line will be the radius that is like this so this line is the radius of the uh, circular lamina lamina so what will be that by using the pythagoras theorem this is the hypotenuse and because this angle is 90 degrees and obviously this will be square root of a square minus x square by using the pythagoras theorem we can evaluate this side of the triangle we have therefore it will be square root of a square minus x square and how about the thickness thickness is the small portion so that will give us the thickness of the lamina and that we are we will be taking it as delta x because it is a very thin circular lamina it the thickness of this lamina will be very uh, small so i am taking it as delta x which will be the height of the cylinder because this circular lamina is in the shape of a cylinder and that delta x will become the height of the cylinder and so the radius of the cylinder will be square root of a squared minus x squared and the height of the cylinder will be delta x so this is what we are going to make use of so i have put that into words so consider the lamina whose distance from o is x and thickness is delta x so i told you thickness of the lamina is the height of the cylinder so it is equal to height of the lamina and that is equal to what delta x so that i have written so now the radius has been calculated as square root of uh, a squared minus x squared i told you how we calculated it so radius of the lamina by using the pythagoras theorem we calculated it as a squared minus x squared now we have to find the volume of the lamina so in order to find the volume of the lamina we have to use the volume formula for a cylinder because the circular lamina is a very thin cylinder and what is that it is pi r square h where r is the radius so what is the radius of this lamina it is square root of a squared minus x squared so pi r square so r radius square multiplied with the height h so that is delta x the volume of a cylinder is pi r square h and here the lamina is in the shape of a thin cylinder because it is a circular lamina and therefore it will be pi r square h but the radius r here is square root of a squared minus x squared so that square divided into delta x and that will be equal to pi square root and uh, square, square of the square root is the same value that is a, a squared minus x squared delta x so this is the volume of the lamina next we have to find the mass of the lamina which is equal to volume of the lamina multiplied with mass per unit volume so that is equal to what is the volume of the lamina it is pi a squared minus x squared delta x and what is mass per unit volume we have already taken it as rho so if you see here mass per unit volume is rho so that i'll be substituting here so we have rho therefore the mass of the lamina which is taken as dm is pi multiplied with a squared minus x squared delta x into rho so now the mass center is the point on the line oa at a distance x from the point o so this already we have taken now the uh, from this we we can find the mass center that is center of mass of the Uh, of the hemisphere which will be og and that is equal to integral x dm the whole divided by capital m and x varies from what here x varies from 0 to a because the radius of the hemisphere is a and so from the point o 
the distance is uh, at the point o the distance is zero and after that after that uh, x uh, the radius is a and so it varies from zero to a so therefore this will be equal to integral zero to a and what is uh, x we have to write as it is what is dm dm is this value that is pi multiplied with a squared minus x squared and delta x when it comes within the integral i already told you it will become dx multiplied with rho and this divided by capital m what is capital m we have already calculated capital m which is 2 by 3 pi a cube rho so that we have to substitute here so 2 by 3 pi a cube rho so now if you see this rho and rho gets cancelled and then pi and pi gets cancelled so further multiplying this x within the bracket we will be having this to be equal to integral 0 to a x a square minus x multiplied with x square is x cube so i'm just multiplying this within the bracket so x cube and then dx divided by 2 by 3 i have a cube in the denominator so we we will re rewrite this so the 3 is in the denominator so it will become like 3 by 2a cube and then we will integrate whatever is there within the bracket so the integration of this will be a square is a constant so a squared integration of x is x squared by 2 minus integration of x cube which is x power 4 divided by 4 between the limits 0 to a so now we will do the, uh, substitute the upper limit minus the lower limit so this will be equal to 3 by 2 a cube multiplied with when you apply the upper limit it is a square so it will become a power 4 by 2 minus again substitute a over here so it will be a power 4 by 4 minus the lower limit it becomes 0 so that's equal to 3 by 2 a cube multiplied with the lcm is 4 so 2 a to the power 4 minus a to the power 4 so what it is it's equal to 3 by 2 a cube multiplied with 2 minus 1 is 1 only so a power 4 by 4 so we can cancel a cube and then we will be having 3 a divided by 4 2 times is 8 so 3 a by 8 is the center of mass for the solid hemisphere where a is the radius of the hem solid hemisphere so therefore the center of mass for this is 3a divided by 8 so sometimes they may give the value of the value of a that is the radius of the hemisphere and they may ask you to calculate the uh, center of mass in that case you must substitute the value of a here and you must uh, find the answer so hope you have understood how to find the center of mass of a solid hemisphere when the radius a is given so with this this we, i i conclude this problem in our next video we will be finding the center of mass for a solid cone with height h so kindly follow the next video lecture thank you